Now, what do you have to do? As you can see from the slide there, you have to go outside and put a stick in the ground. Stop if I'm going too quickly. Got it? Now, the stick, as you can see there, will produce a shadow. Here's the sun, okay, and it's beaming along and it's going to produce a shadow, okay? You go outside and you say, right, look, there's the shadow, that, and what's the time? The time on my watch says 11.25, that's that, okay? Then what we do, as we talked about earlier, is you wait for a little bit of time, and the sun will get a little bit higher, a little bit more west, and so it'll produce a shadow over here, which is a little bit shorter, get it? And it might be 11.45, let's say. And then a bit later on, the sun's over here, and it produces a shadow over there, which is 12.15, let's say, the shadow's over there. All right? Do you get the idea? As the sun moves over from east to west, the shadow is going to get shorter, like that. Okay? Now, what do you have to do? Next thing you have to do is to measure the lengths of those shadows. So you get a ruler, and you measure the length of those shadows. And what you then do is to plot them on a graph. So you draw a graph of shadow length against time of day. All right? Pretty obviously what you're going to get is that. Okay? The shadows will be quite long in the morning. They'll get shorter as the day goes on, as the sun gets higher. This point here is the interesting one, because at this particular time, this is the one we're after. This is the time of... shortest shadow, all right? It's the time at which the sun has reached its highest point, we get the shortest shadows, and after that, the sun starts to drop into the west, okay? Sorry about the lights going. Okay, the sun starts to drop into the west, and the shadows start to get longer again, okay? So it's as simple as that. You go outside, put a stick in the ground, record shadow length, and work out the time of shortest shadow, okay? What is this time of shortest shadow known as? In simple terms, we call it noon. noon. Someone's called noon. What other names do we have for it? Midday. midday. Okay, so you well, sometimes call it noon, sometimes call it midday. What time on the clock should it be? Should be 12 o'clock, shouldn't it? All right. Now, in theory, we ought to expect that to happen at pretty much 12 clock okay and what we're going to look at this morning before we go outside we're going to have a look at the fact that actually it won't happen at 12 o'clock it does sometimes but most times it doesn't happen at 12 o'clock okay and what we need to do before we go out and do our shadow stick project uh, what we need to do before we actually start having a go at doing this is to understand why okay there are basically three reasons why this doesn't always happen at exactly 12 o'clock, okay? Now, the first one is quite easy to spot. If we actually do this experiment and go outside, uh, 12 o'clock is the wrong answer because it's, well, it's about, is it the 7th of July today? It's the 9th, good answer. Today is the 9th of July, so it definitely won't be happening at 12 o'clock. If you do it on the 9th of November, it would, but not now, not in these months, not in May, June, July, August, and September. That's right. We're currently on what's known as British summertime, all right? Which means our clocks have been put an hour ahead of the sun, all right? British summertime basically means we add one hour during the summer months, okay? So when the sky gets to 12 o'clock, yeah, when the sun gets to what it thinks is about 12 o'clock, what's my watch going to be showing? It's actually going to be showing 1 o'clock. All right. So if you allow for British summer time, then it ought to be about 1 o'clock. Okay. Because clock time and sun time have this hour between them, which is called British summer time. If you go on holiday to Europe, you'll probably find the clocks there show what's called Central European time, which I think from memory is two hours ahead. So you'll actually need to wait till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, okay?
So the first thing is a civil thing to do with our wretched clock system is we are an hour ahead. So we're looking at one o'clock. Okay. Now, um, there's another thing which will affect it, which we have mentioned already, which is longitude. Okay. Let's just understand a little bit about what longitude is, all right? Because it's going to have quite an effect on this piece of coursework. And in fact, if you read the instructions for this coursework, that's what you're going to work out, all right? You can use this piece of uh, measurement to work out your longitude, okay? So yes, absolutely, longitude is going to change this time, okay? What we're doing today, we know our longitude, so we can kind of do the experiment backwards. Uh, we know what our longitude is, but let's see why longitude might actually affect it. Okay, and I think I brought my big map of the UK with me. Okay, uh, here's my big map of the UK. All right, Skipton's up here somewhere. Down here we've got London and places like that. Okay, I can't keep holding this, so let me draw it on the board for you. Uh, here's a drawing of England. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Britain. Uh, it's the southeast. It's got a bit wrong, isn't it? Uh, where's Skipton? About there. Yeah. So there's us in Skipton. Uh, down here's London, in particular, uh, a place called Greenwich, which is quite important in these matters. Okay. Um, now, what I want you to imagine is we found up a school in London. Let's suppose we find up a school in London, specifically in Greenwich, okay? And here's us in Skipton, all right? So this is our experiment here. We're going to do our shadow stick experiment later on today, all right? That's there. And what we're going to do is there's also going to be another school over here in Greenwich, all right? There, in fact, I'm to move them a bit. They're going to do their experiment as well, okay? <coughs> Now, let's suppose we went outside, we did our shadow stick experiment, it worked really well, we got some fantastic results, and at the instant, can you imagine, here comes the sun, it makes our shadow shortest shadow there, we go, right, oh, that's brilliant, that's the shortest shadow, immediately we get to the time of shortest shadow, we phone up the school in London, what are they going to say? Is that going to be different, because they have a, a longitude of zero? They do, uh, as you may know, Greenwich and points on the Greenwich Meridian have a longitude of zero degrees. That's true. It is going to make a difference in which way? Which way does the Earth spin make the sun seem to go? In the sky. The fact the Earth's spinning, you're absolutely right. Which way does that make the sun seem to go? East to west. So my question to you is, I like nearly all of what you said except for one thing. Who, let's find the sun, because the other back of pencils is the sun. Who's going to get the sun first? Remember the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Here it comes again. Who's going to get the sun first? They do. Alright. Basically, a really good way of thinking about this is to think of the sun. Here's the sun reaching its highest point. Okay, now think of that a bit like a train that's travelling across the country. It travels from the east, out towards Russia, into the west, into the Atlantic Ocean, and it travels across like that. Okay, so what would they say? We say, right, waiting for the sun, here it comes, here it comes, shortest shadow, right, ring them up. What are they going to say? Yeah. Some time ago, we'll talk about how long in a minute, some time ago, what did they do? While we were still going, always getting shorter, getting shorter, getting shorter, they were going shorter shadow. There's the sun, its highest point in Greenwich. You see? What's it look like for us? Is it its highest point? Not yet. Not yet. Some minutes later, it gets the highest point in Skipton. Some minutes later, it'll be highest point in Cornwall. You know where Cornwall is? Down on the toe of Britain, down here. And then off into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? So this is the idea, what we're talking about here. How far east to west you are is known as your longitude. Okay? Greenwich has a longitude of zero. Why zero? 
an odd number. Why is Greenwich zero degrees longitude? Why isn't it like 28 and a half or something? Nought sounds like a special number. What do you think? Greenwich Mean Time is set in Greenwich because it has zero longitude. But why do you think Greenwich has got a longitude of zero? Effectively, yes. If you go that way from Greenwich on the Earth, you're defined to be going east. And if you go this way, you're defined to be going west. Greenwich is the dividing line between the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere. Yeah. Is there another car like anywhere else in the world that's like Greenwich? Is it zero? Yeah, loads of places in Africa. I think this goes down through France, down through Europe. Um, it goes down, a lot of places in Central Africa are, in, um, are on the Greenwich Meridian because it obviously goes all the way down. It goes eventually from the North Pole of the Earth to the South Pole of the Earth. Okay? Um, there's a meridian through Skipton, but it's not a meridian which is called zero. The meridian through Skipton is called two degrees west. So if you drew a line from the North Pole through Skipton to the South Pole, that's the two degree line of longitude, okay? This is the zero degree line of longitude. Technically, as you probably know, this is called the Greenwich Meridian. It's what it means. A meridian is a line from North Pole to South Pole, all right? So this just happens to be the one through Greenwich. There used to be a meridian through Paris. There still is. But it's not used for the measurement of longitude anymore. There used to be ones through important towns in Spain, and Italy, and places like that. For reasons we won't go into, because they're a bit politically incorrect, um, that we've chosen to use, the world's agreed to use the one through Greenwich as the zero line. Okay. Technically, I think to be a bit more uh, uh, pleasant about it, it's now called the Prime Meridian. Okay. But it is literally the one that goes through Greenwich. Greenwich, oh, Greenwich has moved a bit, sorry. Uh, if you watch EastEnders, you know the map at the beginning of EastEnders? Yeah. Look at the right hand edge. It's pretty much where ships in olden times could get up the Thames. Beyond Greenwich, the Thames gets a bit narrow and a bit difficult, so it's pretty much where our navy would have been and where loads and loads of ships would have been in olden times, and that's why we've chosen Greenwich. Okay? Now, the question is, how much? The first thing is to be clear, the sun will reach its highest point, noon or midday or whatever, in Greenwich, some time before it reaches Skipton. Okay? As I said, think of the sun not just as a distant thing in the sky. And if you stop people in the high street and said, do you get a different view of the sun in London compared to here? I thought so, really. Um, but it's true. Think of the rising of the sun, the sun reaching its highest point. That's a bit like a train. It passes uh, Greenwich, and a bit later on, it passes Skipton. In simple terms, the sun can't be overhead. Sorry, the sun can't be at its highest point in two places at once. If it's at its highest point for Greenwich, it can't be for Skipton. But it could be for, let's take a town here. I can't remember where it is. They've got quite a big statue. They've got a big little monument on the sea, on the cliff top. Uh, the Greenwich Meridian actually goes right up into Yorkshire. It's the East Riding of Yorkshire. It's out on the East Coast somewhere. But there is a little town that's got a little uh, monument thing. Uh, they will get exactly the same time as Greenwich. If there was a school there, let's take a third one. If there was a school in Yorkshire, out on the coast there, on the Greenwich Meridian, here they come. Sorry. Greenwich You see? That's Greenwich. That's the school in East Yorkshire. Both on the Meridian. There's the sun. Here comes the sun. You see? They would report, if they found each other up, they would report exactly the same time, because they're on the same line of longitude, okay? Now to work out how much effect this is going to have is pretty easy. We've talked already about the Earth is turning, we talked about that earlier on, the Earth turning round. Well, let's think about it. How many degrees does the Earth turn through in a day? 360. And how long does that take? 24 hours, okay? 360 over 24? It's 15 degrees per hour. All right. If you look at the next time you see a sundial, you know the sundial has the hours marked on? Have a look at the lines. They're roughly 15 degrees. 
All right? The sun takes an hour to do 15 degrees in the sky. Why? Because it's got to do 360 degrees in 24 hours. Okay? Let's break that down a bit further, though. I want to know minutes. One degree is going to be how many minutes? 415 to 60? This is today's important number. This is today's important number, four minutes. Every degree of longitude, in fact, let's put the one degree line in. You see? It takes four minutes. So when I said think of the sun like a train travelling across the country, this is how fast it goes. It does one degree every four minutes. So let's come back to this then. Because of longitude, well, common sense suggests the sun should reach shortest shadow at 12 o'clock. British summertime says no, 1 o'clock. Longitude then says no. Here's the time for Greenwich. If we were a school in Greenwich, we could stop now, because we haven't got any longitude, have we? Our longitude is zero. So a school in Greenwich would expect to see the sun at shortest shadow at one o'clock today. But we don't expect that. We expect the sun to be there at one o'clock. What time are we expecting shortest shadow today? Eight minutes past one. It's one o'clock because of the wretched British summertime, not 12 o'clock. Why is it 108? Because we are two degrees west of Greenwich. And the sun, think of it like a little train, takes four minutes to cross each degree of longitude. Okay? So we wouldn't expect the sun, its highest, over, it's, its highest point over there, fantastic, at one o'clock, we wouldn't expect it to get here to its highest point until 108. Okay? We happy with that? Yes. We're nearly there. British summertime puts on an hour. Longitude puts on eight minutes, okay? Right, I'm afraid that's still not the right answer, okay? There is another factor which factors into this, okay? And this is called, it's a rather grand name, it's called the equation of time, okay? And it says that actually the answer isn't going to be 1308, it's going to be slightly different to that. All right. Now, a really good way to understand the equation of time is to think about the sun, which obviously gives us what we call solar time. Where would you look to find solar time? You'd look on a sundial or a shadow stick. So time derived from the sun is called solar time. However, for some centuries now, we've had access to clocks. They obviously keep clock time. We now call that, instead of calling it clock time, we call it mean time. So you've got solar time, or sun time, and you've got clock time, or mean time. All right. Tell me about the meanings of the word mean. Wait, was it it's a, a word that has many meanings? Sorry, that sounds like a pun, it's really not meant to be. If I say the word mean, M-E-A-N, in English... What could I, this, this is sounding like a joke and it isn't meant to be, what, does it, what could that mean? I'm glad to see more than one hand up, because there's a range of answers available. Go on. Uh, could it mean like that you were being mean? Being mean or unpleasant, it could mean that. Couldn't it also be an average? Average, have you come across that in maths? Yeah. yeah. It can mean an average, can't it? So it can mean meaning, it can mean nasty, it can mean average. That's the meaning, sorry, I just keep coming, don't I? Uh, that's the meaning that we use in this case. When you say, as several of you have done, Greenwich Mean Time, I'm sure you know what the Greenwich bit's about. I'm sure you know what time means. What does the mean bit mean? It means average. Clock time, like that clock is producing electronically and my watch is producing and your mobile phone is doing, and people have done with cogs and gear wheels and stuff before electronic clocks were invented, has always meant averaged time. Mean as in average, not as in nasty. What does that mean, average time? It seems a bit strange. Well, a good way to think about it is to have a race. Let's start our race over here. This is going to be, this is our starting point. This is the 1st of January. Okay? And further down the track is the 31st of December. All right? 
So let's imagine that the year, about 365 days, is a bit like a racetrack. So you start on the 1st of January and you go down to the finishing post, which is the 31st of December. It takes about 365 and a quarter days. Okay? Imagine you could see the sun ticking along, so every day it moves further and further away from 1st of January on to 31st of December. We're about in the middle, aren't we, roughly? Are we? Six? So what are we? Yeah, we're about here somewhere, aren't we? Um, and imagine you had a little clock as well. So think of it like a little race. Um, here's the sun, represented by this box of yellow pencils. Okay, just do them up so they don't fall out. Um, this is the sun, okay, and this is a clock. It's actually a watch, but you get the idea. We start off on the 1st of January, okay? We set off, how long does it take the sun to get to the end of the year? 365 quarter days, how long does it take the clock? 365 quarter days. However, this is how the race is run. This is how we go. Remember that word average? Here's the clock. And now let's do the sun on its own. How does the clock move through the year? Constant speed. How long is an hour going to take on that clock today? What if we come back in November and ask you the same question? It's the same. That's what clocks do, isn't it? Think about it. People who make things like clocks, whether they make them out of mechanical cogwheels, whether they make them out of a quartz crystal, to make a really good clock, you've got to have every hour exactly the same length. Okay? Now, again, something people never noticed until they got accurate clocks is if you use that to time the sun, and this is linked to the sundial project, basically, if you went up to a sundial, how does a sundial work? It's got lines every 15 degrees, because that's how long it takes the sun to do one hour. But if you timed it against a clock here, what you'd find is that's not quite how the sun works. The sun sometimes goes a bit faster and sometimes goes a bit slower. And sometimes goes a bit faster and sometimes goes a bit slower. The sun does not go across the sky at a constant speed. The hands of your clock go round at a constant speed. But the sun doesn't do that, okay? The difference between the two, if you said, well, let's pick a day in the year. I'll put it back on. Here comes my watch, here comes my sun. They're moving around, jostling for position. You can pick the day of the year. The difference, can you imagine? The difference between what a clock shows and what a sundial shows. If you ever gone up to a sundial in a churchyard and looked at it and thought, oh, that's wrong. Well, A, in this summer, it'll be out by an hour anyway. It'll be out by eight minutes because we're in Skipton. But the main reason that sundials are always out from clocks is what's called the equation of time. Okay? Clocks and the sun don't move across the year in the same way. A clock goes at a constant rate. Every hour is the same length. The first hour on the 1st of January and the last hour on the 31st of December and all the ones in between are exactly the same length. They are the length of the year, get the word, averaged out. Yeah? This is doing a copy of what the sun's doing, but it's doing a sort of an averaged out one where every hour is the same length. Hence the term mean time. Whenever you hear the, the phrase mean time, it means the time on a clock where every hour has been averaged out to be the same length. Okay? Here's us on the 9th of July. We need to know... Is the sun running ahead of the clock today, or is the sun running behind? They're a bit like the hare and the tortoise. They do this. We don't actually. They do this all the way across the year. Okay? We need to know the difference. And if you look on the board, you can look it up. The equation of time is the same every year. Every year, the sun and the clock do the same funny sort of dance. Today's value, you can look it up. You'll need to do this if you want to do this project on a day other than this one. You'll need to look up the equation of time. It's very simple. You go into Google, put equation of time. You get a big table. Let's look up 9th of July. It's about minus five minutes. Today's equation of time is about minus five minutes. Okay? So, if we add in 
our final factor. It's not 12, it's 1. It's not 1, it's 108. It's not 108, it's going to be with the 5 minutes. Or 113. The question is, which is the right answer? They're both good answers, but only one of them is the right answer. Okay? Again, this isn't just for coursework. In the exam, you need to be able to do this. So let's pose this an exam question, and they say to you, uh, a student is expected to do a shadow stick experiment, and they're expecting a shortage at 1308. On that day, the equation of time is minus five minutes. What time will it actually appear for the student? Many people will put 103, and many people will put 113. And some people will get full marks, and some people will get half marks. Here's a really simple way, because you all need to be able to do this, whichever project you're doing. Here's a really simple way of working it out, okay? What you have to do is imagine you're back at primary school, and the teacher said to you, I want you to draw a picture. I want you to draw a picture of what you did at the weekend. Well, it was nice and sunny last weekend. There's the sun. Let's have some clouds. Let's have some birds flying around, something like that. And last weekend, uh, I went to a clock museum. Okay. Can you imagine this rather strange picture? You've got the sun and the sky in the top half, and in the bottom half, you've got the earth containing a clock factory. Now, this is how the equation of time works. The top half of the picture is the plus, and the bottom half is the minus, just like on a graph. In the top half, uh, think of it like a race. Uh, in the top half, the sun is ahead. And in the bottom half, the clock is ahead. All right? So when you get to the exam and it says equation time is minus five minutes, and you think, mm -hmm. do I add it? Do I take it away? I'm not quite sure. Minus five means... What does minus five minutes mean as opposed to plus five minutes? Minus five minutes means that the clock is currently ahead. So here we are on 9th of July. What does the equation of time being minus five minutes tells us? It tells us that the clock is five minutes ahead of the sun today. On other days, it could be plus five minutes, which means the sun is ahead. Some days it's plus 15 minutes. Some days it's minus 15 minutes. Today, minus five means the clock, because it's in the bottom of the picture, get it? The clock is five minutes ahead of the sun. So what's the correct answer? Go on. Is it 103? It's not, no. It is 113. About half of you. Yeah? Um, how do I do that? Well, think about it. Here's the sun... The way to think about this, the clock is ahead. What does that, does that mean? Add or subtract still don't help. Clock being ahead by five minutes. Here's the sun, tickety tick, it's ticked along to here. This is 108 on the 9th of July. This is 1308. All right? Where will the clock be relative to where the sun is? The sun is at 1308 on the 9th of July. If the equation of time is minus five minutes, which means the clock is ahead by five minutes, where will the clock be? Think of it like a race. Has the clock already been to 108? Think how a race works. If you're ahead of someone in a race, have you covered ground they've already done? Yes. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. Think of it as a race. When they say the clock is ahead, that means the clock is winning the race. It's ahead of the sun. It's already been to 108. We've already been to the point where the clock showed 108. The clock has moved on. The clock is now showing 1.13. Okay? It is tricky. It takes a bit of practice. most common mistake is people go the wrong way. All right? The correct answer for today is going to be 13.13. Today, on 9th of July in Skipton, we would expect the sun to reach its position of shortest shadow at about 13.13. Not 12 o'clock. Why not 12? British summertime gives you an hour. The fact that Skipton is two degrees west of London gives you eight minutes. And the fact the equation of time, this is the hardest bit, is minus five minutes, means our clocks will be showing, think about it, our clocks will be showing 1.13 when our sun 
thinks it's 1308 because the clock is ahead of the sun. Get it? So when you say ahead or behind, think of that picture and think of it like a race. Okay?